One of the interesting aspects of working as a business correspondent with the BBC is you get to go to every corner of the globe looking at the very best and sometimes the very worst of business. I also had six years out here in the City of London working at board level and there I learned a thing or two about quality regarding the professional services. But what about quality in the wider sphere of business and industry? What exactly does it mean? Well I'm going to speak now to a couple of people who should know the answer to that question. High capacity smart media cards in it. When it's a phone that you want it to be for you. Sir David Brown ought to know a thing or two about quality. He is, after all, the chairman of Motorola and the recent president of the CQI. Quality starts with caring about what will please the customer and ends with caring about what displeased the customer. So quality is that journey that organisations are on between understanding what's going to please their customers and understanding what didn't quite please their customers at the end of that journey. Quality is all about making businesses better, about helping organisations in, for example, managing their costs, uh, increasing efficiency, making them more competitive, in identifying and managing their risks, and introducing innovation. The CQI has been helping organisations ac across a range of sectors, private, public, not-for-profit, to do exactly that for over 90 years. Quality is vital to the UK economy and the CQI's role in promoting quality has been recognised recently by the award of our Royal Charter. So an introduction there to what quality should mean in business and industry. But at the end of the day, those companies are in business to make money. So my next question is, what can quality mean to the bottom line? What do those people in the boardroom stand to benefit from if they introduce quality throughout their organisations? Senior management at Celex Galileo have embraced quality at every level in the organisation, which is part of the Fin Mechanica defence and electronics sector. What we've seen consistently over a period of time is that by using the approaches that we've embedded within our quality systems, uh, we're seeing design being more robust, uh, we're seeing design right first time, and that's making the translation into the production phase of the programme easier. Uh, and it's, it means that we've got, uh, for example, higher levels of quality uh, in our software, uh, fewer bugs and problems. So that translates through into project performance and ultimately the financial performance of the individual contracts. And we've seen a consistent improvement in time on all of those features. Introducing quality across the board at Telefonica 02 has helped the company move dramatically up the technology food chain by a method which could best be described as rather back to front. About four years ago, uh, using the business excellence model, we identified that one of the key issues that we weren't doing right at the front end was actually looking after the staff at the front end. So looking at them processes um, from back to front if you like and then driving it back into the organisation helped us a lot because it identified some of the key issues that we weren't physically delivering on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, for this next section I've come here to the River Tyne. I used to spend an awful lot of time on this river as the industry correspondent for the regional newspaper, the Newcastle Journal, reporting on the shipbuilding industry. Everything from the launch of the modern day Ark Royal to the closure of some of those shipyards in Wall's End. Now, quality was important then, but it's extremely important now, as you're going to find out in the next section of this film. These days, Lloyd's Register is about much more than just shipping. But quality is central to all their activities. One of the reasons that, that we've really driven down, down this um, path that we're going down now is that the companies that I've been really impressed with, the, who are clients of ours at the moment, have introduced similar systems and they're all companies that I really admire and are major clients for us. So we worked on the principle that if it was good for our clients and they were clients that we admired, then it really had to be good for us. And I don't think going forward in this global world that having 
quality systems that aren't equally as good as your key clients is, is a sustainable position to be in. So we've established that quality should be present in your organisation and that it can add to the bottom line. But what about taking it a step further and creating professionals whose full-time job it is to preach the mantra of quality? That takes me to my next subject, the role of the quality professional. Being a chartered quality professional is absolutely fundamental to me. I've been working for about 36 years and this is the first time that I will be able to be recognised in my industry by the organisation who knows how to do this stuff and that's the Charter Quality Institute. We are in fact able to share costs in certain areas. We're able to share assets regarding training uh, and other ways. So that networking activity has proved very, very beneficial to us as individuals, quality professionals as individuals, but also to the business. Quality doesn't happen by accident. It happens because there are competent people who know what quality is, what it means and how to make it happen. People who understand and are able to apply the range of quality tools, quality techniques and approaches. Chartered quality professionals are those people. So how do you measure the effect of quality? Well, I spoke to two organisations that are using quality methods to drive their CR or corporate responsibility programmes. We use a balanced scorecard approach. So we don't just look at the financial performance of the organisation. We look at innovation, we look at processes, we look at customer satisfaction and customer results and we also look at the financials and the balanced scorecard enables us to bring together a wide range of measures uh, which Im impact all sorts of areas and are really rooted in the quality of the products and services that we're trying to deliver. I think quality plays a, a massive uh, important role in the uh, pursuit of our CR programs and policies. Um, we've been reporting our, our performance in the CR area quite regularly now since 2003 um, and within those reports we actually put in annual performance targets so we're very keen in terms of not only telling the, uh, the customer uh, and our employees and other stakeholders what our social and environmental impacts are but also driving performance through annual performance targets. So that's just about it from me now. As I said I knew a thing or two about quality when I was in industry. Now, after making this video, I've learnt an awful lot more. I hope you have too. In times of turmoil, you need this uh, more than any other time, because those organisations who are thinking about the only option they have is cutting people, actually what they can do through the management system is they can cut costs by doing things better. I'll, I'll put it really quite basically. That I think that it's a certainty that we will fail if we don't invest in quality, we will slip further and further behind. In periods where we have, we have a stable economic situation, quality professionals can demonstrate skills that business can use to gain competitive advantage. When times are tough, then those same skills may mean the difference between profit and loss, or even the difference between surviving or going under. The question isn't can we afford to use quality professionals, but can we afford not to have people with those skill sets in our organisations?